Republicans than the Republican Benghazi committee was on Hillary Clinton, which, by the way, was a mini trial. Now, no one said that but me. You didn't hear it this morning on the Bloviator number one. Michael Savage insight. You'll hear it tomorrow or next week somewhere else. And listen to what I just said. It's a keen insight. It's probably the number one golden observation of last night's debate, and it's original to the show, and it's important enough for me to repeat it. The interrogators on the CNBC panel were tougher on the Republicans than the Benghazi committee was on Hillary Clinton, and the Benghazi committee was a, a sort of a grand jury. That's what you know. Senate hearings are. They are, in essence, grand jury trials or grand jury hearings, rather, to see if there should be a trial. And they didn't ask Hillary any real questions. They didn't bring any surprise witnesses. They went lightly on her. But look at what happened last night. Am I wrong or am I right? You know I'm right. I'm always right. Because when I'm wrong, I catch it, I correct it, and change it. That's how I've survived. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. This is the Savage Nation. KSFO Mark, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Uh, Dr. Savage, just calling in to report on the availability, or I should say the non-availability. Oh, where, wait, 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 where? Who, who's burying Government Zero now? Uh, Walmart, actually, in Mountain View, which is not too far from San Francisco, as you know. Yeah. Well, I was told Walmart bought a ton of books. What, they're not even in the store? Not even in the store. They have a section that's uh, about a third of an aisle that says bestsellers, and uh, another section that says... Uh, so go to Barnes & Noble... Go to Barnes & Noble, go to Books A Million, you know, and I'm sure you'll find it underneath Feminine Hygiene. I, <laughs> I have asked the two managers. They said that Walmart doesn't control the book supply. They said a company named Anderson does, and they sent me to the back two aisles where the books section is. It's actually in the back of the store, and uh, I looked and looked. I shouted for them behind the door that said... Did, did you talk to Anderson? What did Anderson tell you? Find him. Couldn't find him. Anderson was probably ordering a, uh, uh, Jenny Has Five Mommies. Or Libres Espanol. That's what the largest section was. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're still waiting for the buyers of those books. All right, you're getting a free copy of Government Zero right now. It's doing very well. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm desperate. But, you know, those of us in radio have no friends in the media, or few friends in the media, let's put it that way, those who are not members of any in-crowd or fraternity or sorority, we have to do it ourselves. And I realize it's hard for the audience to listen to it every day for five days. But, you know, this is my only shot at getting you to to recognize how important this book is to America. And frankly, how important it is to you to have the information in order to fight the people who are blind to what's going on, let alone antagonistic to this country. That's why I wrote the book. It's that simple. And I hope you'll check it out at a bookstore. And I know it's everywhere. If it's not in Walmarts, you'll find it in Barnes & Noble. I know it's on Amazon, I know it's in Barnes & Noble, I know it's at Books A Million, and it's a lot of places, so it's not like it's being banned, you know. And that's the third report I've had on Walmart, by the way. Uh, what would you like to talk about? 855-400, this is a great caller on another topic altogether, no book. Jason K. Eugene in Oregon. Wait, go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering what your uh, strategy is, basically this psychological warfare. If your message is suppressed uh, across the country, you kind of are like John Connor with carrying a message to lead a resistance. And how do you replicate more John Connors like you? How do we get started? Do we have a ham radio backup? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Who, <laughs> who is John Connor? Uh, leader of the resistance in the Terminator movies. I'm sorry, my friend. I, I don't... I don't know the movies, but you're saying I'm sort of like a resistance leader, an underground resistance leader trying to get a message out to America. And I don't know whether you're being facetious or serious. I don't know. But you're asking how I do it. First of all, I am honored and blessed to have a daily radio show on 250 stations, most of the big ones in drive time on the East Coast. So don't think that I'm not being heard. I am. I have a huge audience. But how do you filter that down down, down. Isn't that what you're asking to the to the mass public? Yes, you, you're kind. You kind of could learn from the Jesus idea about making high concepts more understandable to the dumbed down American public. No offense to to our people, but we have well, this my my friends. Let me tell you something. If you have a title like Government Zero, people will stop and say, "What does that mean?" Don't you think that's something that even the average uh, rap star can understand? 
I agree. And then after your message is received, do you have actual practical, tactical plans? For yes, 40, 40 Solutions to Save America uh, is the last chapter of the book. It's not just complaining by an old white guy. And uh, maybe I should read those plans. I didn't finish them. They're really good. They're really good. I'm going to send you a copy, though, Jason. Deport all illegal aliens in American prisons. How's that for a plan? I didn't say all illegal aliens like Trump. I said start with those in prison. Who would disagree with that one? Except the prison lobby. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. I mean, think about it. The idea of me being on the radio now is shocking that I've survived 21 years. Every impediment known to mankind was thrown in my way from the beginning. And I overcame them with the help of somebody up there. I mean, somebody up there likes me, I'll tell you that. But nevertheless, I, as I say, I have to keep repeating So I'm on a guy's show this morning, Larry King. This guy is an icon. Of course, he doesn't have a show anymore. He has a little show on RT. But I, I keep going on about it because the, he says he's got seven years on me. The guy's over 80, and he's still doing a show. No one wants to give this up. Don't you get it? Nobody wants to give up when they're in the media. Nobody wants to retire. Nobody wants to quit. And yet last night you saw people who don't have the right to be in the media. You could be a liberal, that's fine. I don't mind tough questions, but I don't like vicious underlings who pretend they're moderators when they're operatives. It's that simple. But could you imagine if I'm still on the radio in 10 years? Or worse yet to the liberal, what if I'm not just on the radio? with the, the I did the Newsmax TV. And everyone says, my God, are you photogenic? Blah, blah, blah. Why don't you do TV? I don't want to do TV. But my message is so important. I'll probably keep writing. I don't know what's going to happen, truthfully. You know, the world is in such a state of uh, crisis right now. Nobody knows what's coming tomorrow. And I was thinking about my own life, looking back and the life of a nation, how much of it is based on chance. How many seminal things have happened to me in my life as a result of chance, not planning, right? The best laid plans of mice and men and all that. You plan, you, you make a, a, a path for yourself, you go down a certain road, and usually things that really change the course of your life. Tell me if I'm wrong, have occurred by chance. Well, let's say equally. An equal number of things come to your life by chance that change the course of your life, right? Robert, would you say that's true? Like, let's say the woman you met, Robert. I'm not going to ask Robert. You you didn't have an arranged marriage, did you? No, Robert's family. I'm not trying to pry. I know he's engaged. God bless him. But uh, how did he meet the young lady? By chance, right? Things happen by chance. And like, let's talk about the nation. No matter what they plan for us, there's always a chance that that it won't work out for Obama. It won't work out for the uh, New World Order psychos. There's always something coming out of the side mirror that you don't expect. Did Obama actually expect Putin, Putin to start bombing ISIS? No. The sorority told him that they had Putin boxed. They were destroying the ruble, running his economy off the ground. Uh, that'll teach him for meddling in Ukraine. We'll do what we want. We got him beat. Don't worry, Mr. Obama. We got him. We got him. We got him. And all of a sudden, he's starting to bomb in Syria. What happens? All the pink ties come out of Washington and start to mumble and do the mumbo jumbo. And Putin does the right thing. He starts to destroy ISIS. So what does Barry do? He launches a, a, a Green Beret raid. Not to rescue Americans, by the way, because so far as I know, there are no American hostages. Who does he try to rescue? No Christians, by the way. Who did Obama waste a Green Beret on? Whose life was lost? To rescue some Iraqi soldiers. That's who. Now, you think about that one. Think about that, that one, that little very, very public display of his commander-in-chiefing last week. So a very brave American uh, Green Beret dies. But did you see the helmet cam of that one? Wow. That was an astounding story. Oh, it's up now. It's on Drudge. They bought rotating ads on Drudge. I was so mad at the publisher today. It comes and goes. I said, get a fixed ad. New from number one New York Times, best selling author Michael Savage, government zero, no borders, no language, or culture. Buy now, learn more. So it's on Drudge now, but it's, it's intermittent. It's fleeting. You gotta buy. Let me tell you something about advertising that I've learned over the years. If I can tell you something about marketing and advertising, rotating ads don't work. Fixed ads work. Rotating ads don't work. You pay more, you get more. It's that simple. 
Because people, you know, you click and it's gone. The next thing is for toilet water. Yeah, watch, I'll click it now. Watch what comes up. Buy Clorox. There, gone. A chicken comes up next. I swear to God, my book disappeared and a rooster came up. Now, that wouldn't be a bad title, a, a bad cover picture, a rooster on Government Zero. I think I'll, I'll use that in my next cover, a rooster with a hat. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Do you mind if I just let off steam? I, I need to hear some old rock and roll. I need to relax a little. I was looking at real estate this morning in New York on the Internet. You know, I own property in here, there, a couple of places here, a couple of places there. You know, the one place I have never bought anything all over all these years is New York City. And here I am, a guy from New York City. I knew the real estate was booming. Like I was there like uh, four or five years ago on a yacht on the Hudson River, three years ago. And real estate was already running away like crazy. So uh, someone in my family says, I, I think we ought to buy an apartment in the meatpacking district. So what does the genius Michael Savage tell him? Don't be crazy. Don't buy in the meatpacking district. It's a horrible area. It's full of junkies and transvestites at night. You don't want to buy there. It went up about triple in the three years. So I have no knack for real estate. I got to tell you, one thing I'm proud of is I have no business sense. I, I, I am I'm proud of that. I'm actually proud of it. I'd like to. I wish I was. I wish my genius was more mathematical. I wish I had had the brains to have bought real estate in the 1970s instead of searching for cures in the jungles that produced nothing for me personally, but maybe gave the world something. I'm. You know, so my son says to me, Dad. He says, stop looking back and regretting what you didn't do. He said, don't you understand that all those years of searching in the forest and looking for plants and being in the health food business and studying nutrition and trying to better human health and writing about trees, don't you understand that that's all part of you? That's what makes you? That's what makes you so far-seeing right now in the world of politics? He said, you've always been 20, 30 years ahead of your time. Go back to your nutrition books. I'm, you know, I don't want to use an overly used word, which is I, I'm blessed with, but I'm really blessed with a great family. You talk about chance. I got to tell you something. I've had some very dark moments in my life. The most, the darkest moments I had in my life were legal, and they they freaked me out. I hate I hate I hate law cases. I don't like them. Nobody likes to be involved in a lawsuit. But I was dragged into a lawsuit. I had to go into a lawsuit to survive in this business. It cost me three years or two years and a million dollars to beat one of the most evil families on the planet in my opinion. And I pounced them. I wrecked them because they, they lost at every level. Now they're appealing it to the Supreme Court, if you can believe this. They know they can't win. The Supreme Court won't take it. I haven't collected one cent that was stolen from me. I haven't collected one of my audio tapes going back to 1994, the year 2000. It's all owed to me. Arbitrator said it's owed to me. The district judge said it's owed to me. It was then upheld by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Very liberal. So what is what does the people do who know how to manipulate the system? They keep appealing it. They would rather give the money to lawyers than to those that they have cheated or tried to destroy. Now, in those darkest moments, in those darkest, mo darkest moments of that lawsuit, which was a long time ago, I had a family to rely upon. And I got to tell you, I don't know that I could have survived it without a family. I was very fortunate that I had a family. And you have to understand what family really is. You don't really know what your family is until you... Well, until you don't have them. That's something that people who have a family understand. And those young guys out there who are listening to me, who think that it's too tough to marry a woman and to have children and it's better to just have fun and sow your seeds and this and that, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. The only thing to remember is this, young man. Listen to me, because I've said it to guys and I see their eyes light up. You know what I say to them? I say to them, if it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. And suddenly a bell goes off in their head. See, most guys don't understand that. I say to them, if it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. You say, what's the revelation? Well, it's quite a revelation, the guys who were given to hedonism. And they have to understand that as they get older, what are they going to have to show for what they've done with their wild oats? Nothing. Nothing. Them in an apartment, that's it. More parties. Your hair is falling out. You get the hair plugs and you're still running after girls. That's an exciting life for you. No children, no son, no daughter, nothing, no continuum in life. I'm not saying if you don't have children, you're not a person. Don't get me wrong. There are many fine people who choose not to have children. That's not my point. The predominant majority of people should have families in this country. 
the good people, the smart people, the good genes. And, you know, I've said this over and over again to gay people over the years, and the smart ones get it. I said one of the